This is Acetra Caviar, and all of this would cost $5,600. The amount from these 16 tins could come from a single Acetra sturgeon, which has to be raised for at least seven years before its eggs are ready for harvesting. This fish is about 12 years old, value approximately three to $4,000. But to farm these 20,000 sturgeons sustainably takes $500,000 a year in operating costs. From the feed, to the ultrasound checks, to the very water that keeps them alive. Each one of those drum filters you see is about 30K. We visited Marshallburg Farm's $10 million facility in Smyrna, North Carolina, to see how they produce hundreds of kilograms of caviar. One of the largest costs of this whole operation is the water. Behind me are 12 grow-out tanks, each containing about 40,000 gallons of water with about 300 fish apiece. These pipes are the lifeline for the fish. They pump oxygenated water into the tanks and pump back treated wastewater to this part of the facility. The water goes through this recirculating aquaculture system, or RAS for short. And in one hour, the RAS system can filter through a million gallons of water. A potential oversight during a routine inspection could lead to massive repercussions. We've had our share of incidents here. I've come in and, and found a tank full of floating fish before. So only after everything is checked can staff move on to actually feeding the fish. The feed is specially formulated so it doesn't float or disintegrate. And it's distributed along the perimeter of the tanks so all 300 sturgeon have a better chance of being fed. We can feed them two pounds of feed and expect roughly one pound of growth. Approximate cost of the feed is about 75 cents a pound. The rough total for our facility per day is about 400 pounds of feed. In any given month, we expect 20 feed days. So you can do the math on roughly how much it takes to operate just this facility alone. That math adds up to $72,000 a year. We have a significant economic reason to go after and raise only females. Females, of course, go for our caviar operation and males go to uh, more of our meat operation, which is only about 5% of our total revenue. The challenge is you gotta still raise the males up to that five year point. That's because up until five years, the fish can't be gender identified. We have to look at their gonadal structure in order to determine that. And that's only large enough when the fish is of a certain age. Once the females are identified, they're separated from the males and they live out their remaining days in these tanks until their eggs are ready. Just to give you a sense of scale, these fish, um, I had them here in 2018. Uh, they're now five years of age. The older the fish, the larger the yield. And every quarter, the farmers carefully sort through each of the 300 sturgeon by hand to see if any are viable for caviar production. Out of 300 fish in here, we're expecting to be able to harvest caviar from 60 fish this season. These fish here, we got them in 2011, so they're now going on 12 years of age. And these are uh, prime candidate fish for caviar this year. They keep their interference with the fish to a minimum in order to reduce stress because... Stressed out fish don't make caviar. You got a whopper? She got something in her? Maybe. A little softer. Mm, it is a little softer. We do a palpation of the fish on the belly to make sure that there's something in there for us to look at. Maybe, maybe, maybe. If they feel potential for eggs in a fish's belly, they'll perform an ultrasound. Okay, so what we're seeing here on the ultrasound, what appears to be these little white splotches, which are individual eggs. We can get a profile view of the entire diameter and roughly project uh, yields based on what we see here. A biopsy will help them test a sample of the row. I think we found a good caviar fish. Take a peek, this, we think this one looks all right. So you can see the eggs uh, stay in the channel of the biopsy tool. We can assess the firmness of the egg, color, texture, and make a prediction that this fish will yield a row that we can make into... Got really good pop. A quality caviar. So this is not caviar, this is row at this point. At, only after salting and packing does it become caviar. Eggs change in texture and size during each cycle, so if farmers miss the window to harvest, they have to wait at least a year to see if that fish has new eggs with caviar potential. If it's really squishy, it's gone past the time when we should be harvesting it. Because if we don't do this step, we're gonna kill a fish that could potentially yield us great caviar later on down the road, but if we don't get good caviar now, it has no market value, so it's very critical. 
Harvesting occurs when a fish is at least seven to eight years old. The sturgeons are euthanized before their roe is extracted. Then we'll screen that roe sack. Then we will salt the roe. And finally, we'll place it on a screen where we'll pick through it with a pair of tweezers any foreign matter out of there or little blood clots or imperfectly shaped eggs. We'll pick through that one by one by one. Um, and this takes about an hour long process before we pack it into a tin, vacuum seal it, and then cold store that tin. So this is where we store all the caviar. It's organized by grade and the tin size. Every harvest is labeled with a designated lot number, which traces back to one fish. And a small sample is set aside for each lot number during the harvesting process. With Ocetra, you know, it's part of the grading system is color. Ocetra caviar has a tendency to have a golden undertone, and like the more golden it is, it can be considered a higher grade. Marshallburg Farm primarily produces three major grades of caviar, everyday, classic, and royal, and occasionally some rare grades like this gold reserve. The grading is based on appearance, texture, and flavor. And flavor is just, it's just almost instinct. Is it, is it really buttery, savory? You know, some just taste a lot richer than others. Leanne can grade as many as 60 lot numbers in a day during the busy season, and the process can take up to four hours a day. I'm gonna use my hand because it has no flavor and my brain will not associate any flavors with it. It's got a nutty, buttery flavor, got some pop to it, so I would call this a classic grade. Marshallburg Farm started their operation in 2011 with about 5,000 fingerlings. Now they have 20,000 sturgeon, with a projected caviar production of up to 1,500 kilograms this year. That's more than double what they produced last year. The U.S. imported $17.8 million worth of caviar in 2018, with half of those imports coming from China. But in recent years, interest in domestic caviar has grown. But we're getting to the point now where our demand and sales outstrip our operating costs. And their operating costs now include efforts to spawn their crop on site, growing their next generation of sturgeon. We have an imperative to complete the loop here ourselves, but um, knowing that we have quite a significant inventory, so that affords us the luxury of some time to get spawning right. In this tank, we keep broodstock fish uh, in the hopes of spawning them. We hope that they just do their job naturally and uh, we come out here one day and get lucky and find a bunch of fertilized eggs. You can always have a dream.